Welcome to my review on Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator, developed and published by Brilliant Game Studios. Epic Battle Simulator is a simulation sandbox war strategy game. This game can be very entertaining, and hopefully by the end of this review, this will help you determine if Epic Battle Simulator is worth it for you. Let's begin. When you start this bad boy up, you will have the options of Sandbox, FPS Invasion, you can take a look at options, and then the Workshop Mods. We will start with Sandbox first. For the unit categories, you will have available of 8 different units that you could put on the field. You could adjust how many units there are on the terms of the amount. There are multiple different options that you could use for the unit categories. I will go over modded units a little later. There are several maps that you could choose from, and you could put them on any position on the map. If there is a lot of units though, if there's like a ton, like if you put like over thousands upon thousands on there, if your computer can run it, awesome, but sometimes they don't apply everything, so I want to give you a heads up there. You could put the orders to have them attack immediately, or have them hold position. When you start this, uh, you'll get hit with a decent loading screen. We're going to skip most of that just to show you that that will eventually hit 100 and sometimes does lag on the 99. When you go in, it'll start showing you the scenery of everything uh, while the units are loading in. It'll display the teams on the top left, as you can see there for the Spartans and then the footmen. Uh, it's only going to show the first team unit there, so if you have seven units for one team, it's not going to show all of them on the top left there. You could turn that off. The help menu will provide all the different things that you could do while this is going on. You could also increase the speed or what it says on the top right of the time scale. And when once when you start getting everything rolling and when you get out of like the escape menu, it'll, you could actually take control of one of the NPCs and you can start racking up kills and it'll show your death as well. Some units will send other units flying as you can see here. There are a lot of units that could do that. It will show how many remaining units are left per team, and will start racking up the kills you can see there. If you press the C button, it will start doing like some cinematic camera that you have zero control over, and it will just start going over units, going close to them by their face, or just going really, really far away. As you can see right here, it should come in in a second. Like that but it's a random unit that it kind of picks off of. It is good, like, if you want to make videos for this game, that if you don't want to control the camera, you could do something like that. With this being a battle simulator, you can have any of the units fight whichever ones that you want, and the quantity as well. And then once when Spartan should close up, yep, I'll give you a nice little victory on top there. I want to speed this up. They all sound like Mighty Mouse, which is pretty funny. And you can slow it down that they literally are barely moving. But if you wanted to get as unique as having an army of dwarves on one team, accompanied by chickens, with dressers, with the charge being led by Santa Claus and Chuck Norris, yep versus an entire army of zombies you can do it the freedom is completely yours and yes i'm going to display this fight you have absolute complete freedom on every single one of the maps any unit you want to have verse if you want to see it go down you absolutely could do that it is so wildly entertaining to see some of these units fight each other and it is enjoyable when you do something like this it's a little silly. The majority, not all, but the majority of the units do have their own voices to them, and some of them even have their own different types of attack. I can't believe they gave him candy cane to use as a weapon. But there are shooters in the game. You could have, like, American soldiers versus German soldiers, and they do have their own little voice lines as well. You can see all the bullet projectiles and units that have laser ones, you'll be able to see it as well. 
Before you enter the sandbox mode, you could also customize each unit. If you wanted to have higher health, damage, range, speed, that will all be provided to you, and you could change each individual one. I have done it. Uh, it is pretty funny to have them all running like the Flash. Uh, but with this, though, this can get old. This can get repetitive. It's a battle simulator. There is no story. Um, so you select the units that you want to select, and you just have them go fight to the death. Uh, so this is definitely one of those games that you, if you're just looking to like mess around with, just to, to have some like fun time, definitely this is the one. Uh, to have like 5,000 Roman soldiers fight the Epic Battle Simulator's version of an ATST from Star Wars. But sandbox mode definitely is a lot of fun to do with all the units that could be provided to you. The other option that you could do outside of the sandbox is the FPS invasion. These are rounds of zombies coming towards you while you are playing one soldier character. You will start off with that there will be like a couple of them there with you, that you could have them follow you by commands, and you're pretty much going to want to hold up, like depending on the map that you pick, up on top here while the zombies show up. You are going to hear all of their little voices that they do, uh, that does happen often. Uh, the next round will not continue until all the zombies are done, and this continues. This will continue to keep happening until you die. Or if you exit the game. There are first aid drops, little care packages that will drop every single end of the round as you complete it. That'll give you health, and you will also get a shotgun. And you also get two troops as well, and you could have all these guys with you when all of the flesh eaters start showing up. This does take a while uh, to go through uh, because they are walking, and then as you progress, they'll start to run. You'll have a mix of walking and running. This actually does get very intense uh, once when you start getting up there. As you can see, round five, there's like a lot. There's a lot going on right now. Um, you have unlimited ammo. All you just have to do is reload with your machine gun. And yeah, at this point it got a little tense for me. Uh, it did get a little repetitive and kind of got a little... I don't know if boring would be the right word to use, but I wanted to get to the next round to see what would happen. And then the runner zombie showed up, you get a shotgun that knocks them all back. Definitely a unique thing to have in here as well. Once when you end this, um, it will show you how far you got, um, so the highest record, most kills, highest soldier count, and zombie slaughtered. Definitely I give it to the devs to have something else on top of here, outside of this being on a sandbox mode, to have this in here as well. But where this shines, in my opinion, for the sandbox mode, is the community mods. The community has definitely made a lot of mods that I enjoyed using and definitely had a lot of fun making a lot of combinations that some- this kind of makes sense outside of Deathstroke, but there's a lot of combinations that you can do that wouldn't make sense that you couldn't do in any other game. Um, and still to this day, with this game coming out within 2017, there is still a community of players that are still releasing mods out for this game. Definitely having Darth Maul with an army of battle droids, versus Batman with 3,000 baby Groots versing each other while the Duel of Fate song is playing is a sentence I never thought I would say in my entire life. Some of the mods occasionally don't know what to do when they collide, um, so you're going to see stuff like that sometimes, but everything is done correctly. The health goes down to the appropriate damage towards that mod. But now it is time for the pros and cons, starting with the pros. Large scale battles, a good amount of units to select, the in-game music is enjoyable, the additional mode FPS invasion, community mods make sandbox mode better. And now the cons. Units can get stuck in the terrain, a large amount of melee units have the same movements and combat, this could get repetitive overall. No multiplayer to verse a friend, no Steam achievements, graphics could be better, 
to scale off any PC to run even larger scale battles than it already offers. I know I did a bit of nitpicking with the cons, but if the devs did plug that into the game, this game would actually be even better than it already is. Overall, the game is $14.99 currently right now. I got this for, I believe, under $5, may have been 3 on some Steam sale. I believe it was the summer sale that had happened. I would wait for that because, to me, this game is one of those games that you just mess around with occasionally, like if something is updating after you do this for a little bit and start going through all the units and the mods that you want to download, if you even want to download the mods. But this game is really enjoyable, definitely wait for that Steam sale, and I hope this video helped you determine if this game is worth buying for you. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time.